the fan club is out in full effect for the next guy. It's his very first time. We can give it up for that. Thanks a lot of balls to be up here to do this. Keep those clubs going for Carlos Marcus Diaz. Give it up for our host. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my first time. I'm really excited to be here. Even more, uh, even more excited. I can't see any of you right now. The light's going. I've got some uh, advice. Somebody before I came up uh, looked at me and said, "Hey, just remember when you're going up there tonight, just picture everyone naked, and you'll do fine." And the problem is that the only person that I've seen naked in this room is my wife. And whenever that, okay, my mom too, but whenever that happens and I look, my childhood plague of awkward boner comes back. So I may have to do the rest of my set tonight like this. <coughs> Until I look at my mom and then I'm good to go again. <laughs> I've been married now for uh, 11 years. <laughs> Those of you that didn't clap, no. You're like, fuck oh, yeah. <laughs> Not fun. And uh, I can tell you that being married, the one thing that is the constant is uh, masturbation. <laughs> so when my when, when my wife goes out, I'm like, okay, bye, honey, bye, love you, see you soon. Door shuts. <laughs> okay, you guys stay here, watch Barney. Dad will be right back. <laughs> Got three kids. I love Barney. <laughs> so when I was a little kid. One of the things that uh, I always thought would be really cool is to have one particular person <clears throat> narrate my life. Morgan Freeman. Yes. I wanted Morgan Freeman to narrate my life. But then I thought about it. As a kid, it would have been awesome. But now that I've been married for 11 years, it would be pretty depressing. This is kind of what it would be like on a day-to-day -day basis. And on that morning, he woke up and went to work. <laughs> and he drove and went down to the same basement and stared at the same wall, three feet in front of his head, for eight hours at a time. And see, Morgan Freeman would start to get bored of this shit. <laughs> so he'd start to make some really crazy stuff happen just for entertainment purposes. And then on his way to work, his car died. <laughs> there was no imaginable escape. And without notice, 30 gorillas surrounded his vehicle <laughs> with no justification for their anger. <laughs> All of them brandishing swords. <laughs> and they began to beat the shit out of his car <laughs> until it was no longer recognizable. And it ended as quickly as it began. <laughs> See, for me, That'd be depressing. The person that I want to have narrate my life would be the guy from the B-52s, right? <laughs> so that no matter what happens, good or bad, it's going to sound amazing. <laughs> he did a good job at work, and he got a raise, and he's going for sushi, and he might get laid. <laughs> <laughs> or bad. He's 40 years old, and he's out of shape, and they got diabetes, and they cut off his legs! <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> Had somebody tell me one time to never lose my youth, and uh, always be a child at heart. So I figured I'm going to go out, practically try and walk this out. And apparently, that excludes embracing small children in a Chuck E. Cheese ball pit. <laughs> I'm in with this one, guys. We, uh, when I grew up, we grew up pretty poor. We uh, depended a lot of times uh, for food on a soup 
from the soup kitchen. And at this particular soup kitchen in my neighborhood, there was a guy named Brother Howard. And Brother Howard later on got the nickname the Soup Pantry Pimp. Uh, because what he would do is when the single ladies would come in, all oh, the single ladies, he'd come in for food. <laughs> and depending on how much they would flirt with him, or do other things, that would determine exactly what they would get in their uh, food box. And um, if things really, really progressed, he would sometimes throw a frozen pizza in. It's kind of messed up. <laughs> but damn, I ate a lot of pizza when I was a kid. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Thank you, guys. <laughs>